Hello, I'm Coach Tom Dvorak from Body Physics Endurance Coaching. It's mid-August 2021, and we're getting ready for fall marathons. Uh, likely for most of us, it's our first mass start half or full marathon in likely two years. And so with this newsletter, I wanted to talk a little bit about returning to mass start racing and um, likely most of us are a little bit out of practice. So my advice is first and foremost, set realistic goals on your time. Secondly, remember to have fun. And third, make sure that you give yourself a little bit more time the week before and even the day after the race for yourself so you decrease some of the stress. With the pandemic potentially winding down, we've had all summer where many people have had vacations, uh, weddings, family birthdays, anniversaries have returned sometimes twofold, making up for um, lost time last year. Employers are demanding people to come back to work. Kids are back in school. There's an awful lot of stress. And likely um, you've been pulled many different directions and what may have suffered, maybe your running mileage, maybe your long run, um, potentially nutrition, sleep, uh, recovery, or even some of your just general training so although it may not be perfect, remember why you're doing this for fun and enjoyment and let's avoid more stress. And so let's go in into this a little bit more rested. Undertrained is far better and rested is far better than trained and exhausted. Um, and obviously even better than undertrained and exhausted. So um, I've got some tips here for you. Um, I'll kind of uh, number them and, and, and do them in order. Uh, number one is try to get more sleep here in these last couple weeks um, of training before you get to your taper and then to your marathon. Um, secondly, let's try to focus on, on just making minor changes, get a little bit more hydration, uh, make sure you're eating a little bit cleaner, a few more vegetables, maybe taking your vitamins. Um, even 20 or 30 minutes more a night of sleep can really make a big difference. Um, stretch after each run, do a little bit of foam rolling, myofascial release, try to knock out any of those little aches and pains. Make sure your running shoes aren't worn out and you've planned for them, supply chain's been an issue. Um, of course, we never want to change our shoes just before race day, uh, certainly not the brands and, and the models. Um, make sure that you avoid um, last minute changes there with those running shoes. Um, so figure out what the running mileage is on them and let's plan accordingly. Uh, another big, big one is so many athletes make the mistake of their last run, long run, ends up basically being as good or better than their marathon performance. And, and this happens <clears throat> many times because there's not a lot of stress. You've been used to doing your long runs. You're feeling pretty good. You've got your morning ritual and routine. You've taken it seriously enough that you've got to bed at the right time the night before and in a very low stress environment, you head out on your long run and you just start checking the miles. And pretty soon, 10, 11, 12 miles are gone by and you're feeling pretty good. You're hitting your nutrition and you're chatting with friends and maybe you just start picking it up a little bit more and a little bit more. And those last long runs, depending upon your level, are anywhere from 18 to 22 miles for most people. Ideally, your last long run being 22 miles at training pace 
is pretty close within five or 10 minutes of what your total marathon time would be at race pace. So if you run your last 22 miler at race pace, you basically ran your marathon minus four miles and change, right? Uh, three weeks before. So to come back, it, it wouldn't make sense that you could come back and, and do two marathons three weeks apart really well. So many people just end up pushing too hard in that, that last 22 miler, 20 miler, 18 miler, or it's planned for 18 and they go 22 or 24. Um, so try to hold back there and not overdo it. Save it for race day. Make it a good training adaptation, but let's not push it any further. Um, the next important thing is, is making sure you have a realistic time goal based on your training as to what you're going to finish on marathon day so that you set up your pacing right. And remember, you wanna run that first half of the marathon very relaxed and stay on your nutrition. I regularly tell people that a marathon is a 10 mile run, a 10 mile run, and a 10K race. Um, and so the first 10 miles should be like any other training run, only a little extra emphasis on uh, nutrition, hydration, staying relaxed, pacing, and just taking the straightest line, being the most efficient. The next 10 miles is going to be typically an emotional roller coaster. You're going to feel great for a mile. You're going to feel horrible for a mile. You're going to wonder, um, you know, if you did anything, everything right, why you're there. You're going to feel like you're killing it. It's going to go up and down, but you just stay the course and you keep checking off those miles and you stay on pace and then you get to 10K to go. When you get to 10K to go, one of three things happen. Number one, um, you just kind of hang on and finish doing more of the same. Um, it, it, it may get tough, but you're struggling and, and you just kind of hold and stay course and, and that's, that's one option. Number two is you, you're not really having a bad time, but you're not really feeling like you can, you can push any further, so you're just kind of maintaining the pace and you're checking off more miles in that last 10k maybe getting to 22 or maybe to 23 with 5k to go reassessing again and seeing if you got a little bit more um, the last one is the ideal one is you get to that 10k to go and you're feeling pretty good you've, you've weathered the storm of that middle 10 miles and at that point what you're gonna do is you're gonna see if you can steal another five or 10 seconds per mile from 20 to 21. And you just kinda uh, very cautiously increase your pace a little bit. You're feeling good, you're staying on nutrition, you're starting to maybe pass some people, and you get to 22, and you reevaluate again, maybe you pick up another couple of seconds per mile, and um, you know, this may even be perceived exertion that you're just feeling like you're you're pushing harder and you're feeling good and you've got more to give, but your pacing's pretty similar. But you'll start passing people. That's when you're having a really, really good day. And you, you can't get there by running too hard that first 10K. So um, in order to have your best race, you've got to remember that you've got a kind of negative split your marathon. The first half has to be a little slower than the second half for an ideal optimal performance. And the way we get there is typically 10 miles, 10 miles, and then arguably racing the last 10K. Um, let's remember to not change anything down the stretch. So let's be um, really focused on, on not making any major changes. We certainly don't want to eat something different the last couple days before that isn't, isn't tried and tested. I tell people to, because of GI distress and stuff, to stay away from raw vegetables down the stretch. We still want to have our vegetables, maybe have them steamed. Um, you know, carbohydrates are good, more sweet potatoes leading up to the race, um, brown rice, quinoa, stuff that's going to hold on to 
a little bit more glycogen, um, you know, give you a little bit more endurance on race day. We want to make sure that um, we're not uh, changing running shorts, changing socks, um, buying a new pair of shoes at the expo. Um, avoid any of those changes. Stick with what you've successfully done while you were doing your training. And um, although being fully prepared is great, being rested and slightly underprepared is just fine too. You want to be rested. That's first and foremost. So as we get to those last three weeks, don't try to cram everything in. You're going to decrease your volume each week. You can keep some of the intensity. So if you do a tempo run um, normally on Wednesdays and it's it's uh, five or six miles decrease it to three miles if if you were doing speed workouts and you know it was regular for you to do uh, six or eight by eight hundreds do four of them cut your your distance down cut your your um, don't add to your speed keep the speed what you've been training so if you'd been running them at a certain pace run them at that same pace just decrease the number um, so that your body's recovering but not going into a complete recovery where you're flat on race day. Um, try to get a little bit more sleep, use the extra training or extra time you have on Saturdays and Sundays because you're not running as long to make sure that your hotel reservation's right or you've got um, everything planned for your friends and family, um, the logistics, all of those little things um, try to get them done in advance so that there's no stress leading up to race day. And then last um, is remember to have fun. Remember to embrace the fact that we're back to racing. You're getting to do this. This is something that you missed. Remember what it felt like when you, that, that lost feeling you had when you couldn't do it. And um, now you're getting to do it. So embrace the moment. Enjoy it. And um, I wish you all the best of luck in your fall marathons and your last uh, long runs.